when we get on the ground floor of a layer one blockchain, like we did with our universe, we know there's going to be changes, adaptations, optimizations, and even hard forks. Well, today I've got some exciting news because the first official Tari Universe hard fork has launched. That's right. It's up and running. That gives us one more way we can earn that juicy XCM token. But also I want to share with you some optimization tricks to squeeze out some more power from those CPUs you're already running. So if you're ready to get started, let's dive in the video. So the first thing I want to talk about is the hard fork. How does that affect miners just like me and you? And how do we capitalize on those new opportunities? Well, to do that, we have to understand exactly how we were mining before. So originally, Tari was released with two ways to mine, which was SHA-3x utilizing our GPUs and then RandomX utilizing our CPUs. Now, those were also merge mined with the Tari and Monero blockchain. So the problem there is you had a lot of hardware already on the Monero blockchain sucking up a lot of those Tari. Made it really hard for us smaller miners. So the hard fork actually opens up the doors for us smaller miners specifically. So if we take a look at the announcements, we can see that the stage one hard fork is already live. That happened yesterday. Instead of two 50% reward pools, now there are three, all running at 33%. The first one is 33% of XTM will get a random X merge miner, which is Monero plus Tari. That's where all the hardware is really living on the Monero blockchain. But to get a piece of that, they're putting 33% to random X solo mining. That's Tari only. That is where it's really focused on the smaller miners. And to balance that out, the GPU mining on SHA-3 has dropped from 50% of the rewards to 33% of the rewards. Now, this is heavily focused to allow smaller CPU miners to regain the opportunity to earn the XCM token without eliminating merge mining on the Monero blockchain. Now, I've got to say, I am super excited to have this hard fork released because I don't know about you, but I've seen my CPU mining rewards continue to plummet over the last week. There's simply no way for a small miner like me to compete with all that hardware out on the Monero blockchain. This is great because it brings us back to running the Tari app on our home computer and earning the XTM token. After all, that's what Tari Universe is all about. But that's not the only thing that's coming up. In fact, in another week, we're going to have one more hard fork launch. So let's take a look at it. So we can see here that the stage two fork was scheduled to occur on the 28th. Well, that's tomorrow. Probably not going to happen. So I'm estimating a week, maybe two weeks till it occurs. But what that's going to do is split up the GPU side meaning that 25% of the GPU mining will still be on SHA-3, and 25% will be moved to Kukuru 29, which is a GPU-only ASIC-resistant algorithm. That means for the final setup to earn XCM tokens, you'll have four different avenues. The first one will be 25% will go to the random X or merge mined on Monero. 25% will go to the random X or independent miners. 25% will still be mined on GPU, utilizing the SHA-3, and 25% will be mined with GPUs utilizing Kukuru 29. Now, that's the final result of what Tari has planned. So, a lot has been happening over the last few weeks, so we got to stay up to speed on it. But now let's talk about CPU mining. How can you start earning on that new independent pool, and how can you optimize your CPUs for maximum hash rate? Well, the great thing is, as you guys know, I released a video last week walking you step by step through the process of renting a server and getting them up and running for both GPU and CPU money. And to make it even easier, I wrote a GitHub document where you could copy blocks of code, paste them in a notepad, edit a couple fields, and then paste it directly into your server. That way it made it as easy as humanly possible. Well, now of course things have changed, which means the document has to change. Thankfully it did. And I'm gonna walk you through the process of how to get a rented server up and running utilizing the new mining pool. Now, before we do that, I want to give a huge shout out to a very special person, Impala. Thank you so much for the, all the assistance you give everyone within the Tari Discord, as well as thank you for taking the time to read through my code and advise me on how I could make it more optimized for everybody out there. Now, they didn't just give me the answers. They shared the documentation, how I could optimize the miners and let me learn at my own pace. And that's the best way to do it for all of us. So Impala, thank you very much for everything that you do. Now, if you're ready to get started, let's go pick up a new server and get it mining on the brand new forked blockchain. Now, to get started, the first thing I need is a new server. So I'm going to jump over to Core AI, and I'm going to start looking through these for the best deal for GPUs and CPUs. So I can see some 4070s, and I see a 4080 here, and it has a processor with 36 cores and 72 threads. That's a lot better than the 16 and 16. So let's go ahead and rent that guy right there. Now, once we click rent, it's going to take us over here to the select the image we want on that server. We're going to go with the Ubuntu Jupyter server. 
Then it'll take us to our configuration page. Now this is where I like to change the password. So I'm gonna unclick the use public authentication. And down here where it says SSH password, I'm gonna put a new one here. And in honor of Impala, I'm gonna go ahead and put the password as Impala. Keep in mind, this is just a test server for this video. Once I've got that set, I'm gonna go and click create. Now that'll take me over to my orders page. And as you can see, it gives me the order information, the server information, and the port forwarding. So what we need to do is copy this public port information. So go ahead and highlight that and copy it. Next, we wanna open up a PowerShell window. So go into your search bar and start typing in PowerShell. And we wanna open Windows PowerShell system. So I'll click on that to bring up a new PowerShell window. Now, once we have that, we wanna type in SSH space root at, and then paste what we copied from the core server. Now, we do have to make one minor change on this, which is get rid of this colon right here. So we're gonna delete the colon and we're gonna add a space slash p space there we go so it should look just like you see here on your screen once you have that entered go ahead and hit enter now the first time you connect to the server it's going to ask you are you sure you want to connect go ahead and type in yes and hit enter then it's going to ask you for your password so go ahead and type in your password and hit enter now i will warn you it will not show your password while you're typing it that's totally okay but if you've gotten here to the root command prompt then you are in the right place now we can go ahead and close the core server window to get that out of the way and make this a little easier to navigate. I'm going to go ahead and pin my PowerShell to the left and my guide to the right. So this is the guide that I told you about has been updated and I'll put a link in the description down below for it. So now what we have to do is follow the steps. First thing we open our PowerShell right there is the command and how it has to look. We've already done that. Now we're at the first block of code install dependencies. So the great thing is go ahead and click the copy button right here. Go over into your PowerShell and then right click into PowerShell. That's how you'll paste it in. Once you have that pasted, go ahead and hit enter. Now partway through the install, it's gonna let you that there is a new version of the configuration file. We do not wanna change it. So here we wanna select option two keep the local version currently installed. So we're gonna go ahead and hit two and hit enter. Then it will continue with the install. Okay, now that we're back at the command prompt, we know the installation is complete, no errors and everything is great. So let's move to the step three here, download and extract SRB multi-minor. So let's go ahead and copy that block of code Head back into PowerShell, right click to paste in place, and hit enter. Okay, now that we have everything set up to start our miner, we need to pick which miner configuration we want. So let's scroll down here to choose your miner. Now option one is gonna mine both CPU and GPU in a single instance on Lucky Pool with Monero Merge Mining. Now this is a very easy setup, however, if anything goes wrong with a miner, it kicks an error, it will stop all mining processes on both CPU and GPU. Now option two runs a CPU and a GPU mining separately on Lucky Pool with Monero merge mining. Now this has a few more steps. However, if you do have a problem with either the CPU or the GPU miner, it will not stop the other instance. That way in case it kicks an error, you can keep mining on the other one until you get it restarted. Now option three includes the new mining pool that was just added yesterday. So it's gonna run GPU mining on Lucky Pool and CPU solo mining on the new hatchling pool at jagtech.io. Now this is independent GPU and CPU mining instances, meaning if you have an error, it will not stop the other process. So in this video, we're gonna go ahead and go with option three. So let's go ahead and scroll past the other options till we see option three right there. Now the first thing we have to do is create a GPU mining startup script. So let's go ahead and copy that block of code, paste it over into our PowerShell and hit enter. Okay, now as you can see, it's changed to a blank form. It's because now what we have to do is copy this block of code into Notepad. So we're gonna take this entire block of code, then we're just gonna open up Notepad. Now in my Notepad, I've already pasted the Tari wallet address because I'm gonna need to reference that later on in this code. But for right now, let's go ahead and paste that block of code in that we just got from the guide. Now let's head back to the guide and scroll down. So it says we wanna replace the Tari wallet with the wallet on Tari Universe. So that's why I got my Tari wallet address here off Tari Universe. And I want to copy that 
and to paste it directly over the top of Tari Wallet. And I do want to replace those brackets. That's just a placeholder. Okay, next thing it says, replace worker name with anything to help us identify this specific server. So go back in and we want to get rid of the brackets and worker name. And we're going to name this Impala. That way we know which one we're running. Okay, next it tells us to replace the mining pool with the closest one to our physical server. Now, a lot of times we may not know where that server is located. So, fail safe is go with the primary one, which is in France. So, I'm going to go to the tari.luckypool.io, and I'm going to copy that, head back into my notepad, and right here where it says pool, I'm going to go ahead and highlight that, and then paste the server into place. Okay, now it says paste the edited notepad version into the start GPU mining sh file. Okay, so that file we just edited, we're going to go ahead and copy all of that. Then we head back over to our PowerShell and we're going to paste it into place. Now, once we have that over there, we want to save the file. To do that, we have to hit Control plus X and it's going to ask us save modified buffer and hit yes to confirm and file name right. We want to keep the file name the same. So we'll go ahead and click enter. There we go. Our file is saved and it has all of our pertinent information. Okay, now let's go to the next step, 3B. It says create the CPU mining startup script. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy that block of code, paste that over into our PowerShell, and hit enter. Once again, we get a blank document. I think we know what we're doing here. Copy this code into Notepad, then paste the edited version into the startup CPU mining SH. Okay, so we've got to copy that, bring our Notepad back up, and we want to go on to a new line so don't get confused, and paste that into place. Okay. Now, if we scroll down, it says replace the Tari wallet with wallet on Tari universe. Well, we know we saved that at the top here. So let's go ahead and copy that Tari wallet address again. Make sure there's no extra spaces running. Go back into our block of code and scroll down until we find right here. Tari wallet. Okay, we're going to replace the Tari wallet and the brackets with our Tari wallet address. Then it says replace the worker name with anything to help us identify this specific server. Well, we ran with Impala so far. Well, let's do the same. So highlight worker name and the brackets, and we'll type in Impala. Okay, lastly it says replace port if you are running a specialized setup. 3333 for low-end CPUs, 5555 for fast mining CPUs, and 9000 for SSL or TLS. Now, so far I've been running with the default 333, so we'll go ahead and leave that 333 the same as it is. So now what we have to do is go up to the top of our block code, and we have to copy everything that we just pasted in and edited it. So once you have all that highlighted, go ahead and copy that. Then we'll head back into PowerShell and then paste it into place. Now this is where I want to take a quick second and tell you about the CPU optimization. Now the old system just simply used 95% of all cores available. That was it. But this new block of code will actually scan the CPU on your server and then optimize how many threads based on the memory configuration of that particular CPU. So if you're running this already and you've got some old servers still running the old code before today, definitely go back and update them because I can tell you running this new optimized code has boosted every single rented server I've been running by 20 to 50%. Yeah, huge boost out there. So once again, huge shout out. Thank you, Impala, for turning me on this information. So now that we have that block of code pasted in the form, we're going to go ahead and save it. And it's the same process. Control X. It's going to ask save modified buffer and Y for yes and file name. We're going to leave it the same. So hit enter. And there we go. Now we have both of our mining files created with all the pertinent information. So let's head back to the documents. So if we scroll down, it says save to file. Yep. Did all that. Okay. Now we need to make both of those files executable. So let's go ahead and copy this next block of code, head into PowerShell, right click and enter. Okay, now that those are executable, we are ready to start mining. So let's go and fire up our GPU mining right here. So to start GPU mining, we're going to copy this block of code, head back over to PowerShell, paste it into place, and enter. And we're off to the races. Okay, now let's us know it has connected the Tari Lucky Pool, and it is starting the auto-tune of our GPU. Now let's take a couple minutes to run. So while it's doing that, let's go ahead and fire up our CPU mining at the same time. So let's head down to the next step. Now we need to open a second PowerShell tab and log in with the same information. So on PowerShell, we'll just add the plus to open a new tab. Here's a great little trick. If you've already been operating in this PowerShell window for your server, it will remember the last series of commands that it used at this particular juncture. So right now, if I just hit arrow up on my keyboard, it will remember the SSH command that I put in previously to log in. 
So once you bring that up, go ahead and hit enter. Then it's simply going to ask me for my password. Well, this was Impala. So you're going to type in your password and hit enter. And that'll take us right back to the root server information dollar sign prompt ready for the next step. So the next thing we have to do is change directory to the SRB miner. So let's copy that block of code, head over to PowerShell, right click to paste it in and hit enter. And there we go. Now we're within that directory. Last, we need to start the CPU miner. Okay. So let's go ahead and copy that block of code, head back over, right click and enter. And the CPU mining is off to the races. Congratulations, you're now up and earning with your brand new server on two different mining pools. But how do you check the earnings? Well, let's take a look at that and I'll put links in the description down below to get you to both these pages. So the first one we're gonna look at is Lucky Pool. Now Lucky Pool is utilizing our GPUs to mine the XTM token on the SHA-3 algorithm. Now to find out your earnings, just simply paste in your Tari wallet address up in this top field. Tell it to look it up. Then you can find out the total hash rate of all your servers, the balance remaining to be paid, and then how much XCM you've already been paid. And if you scroll down, you can get the stats on all your different servers you're running. As you can see, I've got a few of them. And right here at the bottom is our brand new Impala server. And it's up and running and earning XCM tokens. Now to check the stats on our CPU mining, we're going to head over here to the pool.rxt.tari.jagtech.io website. I know, that's a long name. There's a link in the description down below. But once you're here, go ahead and enter your wallet address right here. And then you're going to see all your different servers and what their hash rates are, including an estimate of how much XTM you're going to earn per day, given the total amount of computing power you're supplying. Now, the great thing about this is it is constantly paying into the Tari wallet address. Meaning, unlike Lucky Pool, you don't have to have a certain limit of XTM to get these into your Tari wallet. It'll automatically deposit the XTM as soon as those blocks are confirmed. So right here, we see our Impala miner is up and running and averaging 13.3 kill hashes a second. Not bad. So let me be the first to congratulate you on your transition over to the brand new forked Tari blockchain. But I got to be honest with you, I couldn't have done any of this without help of the community. People like Impala, members of the Atari Universe community, as well as the Down Home Crypto community. In fact, we've even got a channel at Down Home Crypto just to share our knowledge and coding expertise to try to make this more efficient so everybody can profit. So if you want to join the Down Home Crypto community and be a part of the solution, we'd love to have you. I'll put it in the link description down below. And if you like this kind of content and want to see more, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel because I'm going to keep bringing you the best crypto information I can. I want to thank you very much for your time. Until next time, have a great night.